Hey, this is Connor with Biker's Edge. Today I am out riding and reviewing the Giant Trance X Advanced Pro 29. And it takes a lot longer to say that name than it does to crank out a whole lot of miles on this bike. If there's one word to describe it, it's fast. So if you wanna see how fast this thing really is, stick around. Oh, this is sick. Bike jump. Holy cow, look at these leads. This bike, this whole platform is really, really cool. It's a super versatile platform. You know, 29 inch wheels, 135 millimeters of rear travel, 150 millimeters of front. It's got very usable geometry. It's not extreme, although it's very long, it's just not extremely slack. You know, it, it's in that very usable kind of, I don't know, I hate to call it conservative, but it's kind of conservative these days. So we're going to dive into the geometry and the sizing and build kit part of this review. Bikes have been getting longer and longer, slacker and slacker, that's no surprise, but what's a little bit surprising is that this bike didn't go super slack. You know, 65 and a half degree head tube with a 77.2 degree seat tube. That's in the low mode. It does go higher by 7 tenths of a degree. So you can get over 66 degrees on that head tube angle. The geometry is very, very long, however. The, I rode an extra large, I'm 6'2", almost always ride XL. In this bike, I don't think I could go any bigger. You know, if, if the extra large was five millimeters longer, I think I'd have to jump down to a, a large. The reach in the extra large is 510 millimeters in the low mode and 519 millimeters in the high mode, which is just super, super long. But with that really steep seat tube, it doesn't feel too long sitting down and pedaling. The steeper head tube kind of tucks that front wheel back just a little bit, which helps keep that wheelbase under control. It's only 1,268 millimeters, which is kind of surprising considering the reach on this is 510 millimeters. Chain stays are a good middle ground. They're 438 millimeters, so not ultra short, not really long. I rode the Pro One version of this, 5,500 bucks retail. Um, it has a full carbon frame. I lied, part of the link is aluminum. You actually get a lot of bang for your buck with this bike. You get a Fox Performance Elite fork. You get a Performance DPX2. You get a GX drivetrain guide G2R brakes. Really, you get pretty good components on this thing for 5,500 bucks. Let's get into how this thing actually rides. Um, on the uphill, it was very apparent right out of the parking lot that this bike is a climber. It feels very light, quick, it accelerates quickly, sits high in its travel. The body position is kind of centered to maybe even a little bit forward leaning, um, which is awesome for climbing. This bike does a very, very good job on the uphill. It reminds me of the Orbea Occam, which is kind of the top of the list, I think, for me on bikes that climb better than they should. Giant Maestro suspension platform uh, does a really good job of being very efficient. You don't have a lot of pedal bob, you don't sag into the travel or really wallow or anything. The suspension sits a little bit higher in the travel. It's great for climbing, keeps your weight centered. You're not falling off the back of the bike the whole time. Uh, this bike gets after it on the climbs. Uh, I was really surprised at how good it felt under those standing kind of sprinting efforts where you don't really want to switch gears, but you just got a steep little rise to get over, stand up, put a few pedal strokes in, and the bike doesn't really bob. It doesn't bogged down at all. It just feels quick and efficient. This bike came with a Maxxis Minion DHF on the front and a Maxxis Dissector rear, which are kind of aggressive tires. Uh, we did our tire showdown video recently and after that I, I kind of want to try maybe a little bit lighter weight set of tires on this bike. I think it could take a very good climber and make it you know top of the class. Uh, I think this bike could be that good on the climbs especially with some some lighter weight, faster rolling tires. I did have one bone to pick about the climbing on this bike. I had more pedal strikes on this bike than I'm used to. I, I struggled a little bit in that rocky, flat, awkward climb. I think on any bike, I probably would have hit my pedals a little bit, but I did notice quite a few in that section. Uh, in the low mode, which I, I ran for most of my testing, there's a 40 millimeter bottom bracket drop, which is a lot. That gets your pedal pretty close to the ground. I think if your climbs are kind of like that, really rocky, really rooty, really pedally, um, I think the high mode is probably going to be a little bit safer bet for you. Keep those pedals from, from hitting the ground so much. 
Overall, I'd give this bike a really good climbing grade. I'd probably have to go with an A- minus for it. I think it climbs as well as the Occam. So probably just a little bit better than like an SB130 or a Ripmo or a Hightower, any of those bikes. It climbs like a quick, lively, nimble trail bike. So now let's talk a little bit about how this bike descends. If it's an excellent climber, it's nothing less than that on the downhill. It's a very lively, engaging ride. It really rewards a rider who pumps through rollers, makes jumps out of nothing, uh, really leans the bike over in corners and just kind of attacks berms. It's really, really fun because the suspension is so supportive. It, it's definitely not wallowy. It doesn't just sit in that mid stroke and just kind of mush through everything. It's actually a very lively, energetic, engaging bike to ride. So jumping into that suspension performance, it really does a good job of smoothing out all the small trail chatter, small bumps, things like that. You can carry a lot of speed and momentum through them. And this one has a very supportive mid stroke, and then it ramps up a decent amount at the end. I did have one or two kind of harsh uh, bottom outs on this ride, but that's probably because I was riding trails that I normally reserve for my 160 mil travel bike. It likes flatter, faster, trails uh, as opposed to really really steep like i said earlier the bike has a very centered riding position to maybe just a hair forward leaning um, so you get on steep stuff and the bike just doesn't feel quite as planted and and capable and confident that's not to say i wouldn't ride hard trails on it i just wouldn't be pushing the pace on those trails i'd be a little more careful choose my lines more carefully the Trans X reminds me a lot of the SB130 in that it's, it's got that very firm, supportive suspension platform. It's all about going fast and being efficient. It, it's not the most plush, it's not overly mushy or gushy or anything. It's just very firm, very supported, and it helps you go fast. So I was a little bit surprised that the bike cornered as well as it did for being so long, for having a 510 millimeter reach. I, I think the star of the show there is the head tube angle. It keeps things from being too monster trucky or school bussy. You can get around a corner pretty quickly, even slower speed stuff. Again, you'll notice in the rocky downhill, uh, there's some pretty tight kind of awkward corners. Uh, the bike did just fine. I was able to get around those fine. Um, I was able to get around tighter switchbacks just fine. There's really no issue with that. This thing jumps really, really well. Um, I hit the first little roller, bunny hopped off of it and sounded like an idiot because I said, this bike is really boingy. Whoa, that's boingy. <laughs> this bike jumps really well. It's fun to pull up and make jumps out of nothing. You get a lot of return when you pump into the lip of a jump. There's a lot of energy in that suspension. It doesn't just swallow through and just rob all of your energy. You get a pretty good return. You get a lot of airtime, and it makes for a pretty fun bike to ride. So I ended up liking the Trans X on flowier, faster stuff than I did on steep, rough, chunky stuff. Um, because it's so rewarding to pump this bike through rollers, to make jumps out of nothing, I, uh, those kinds of trails really highlight the strengths of the Trans X, as opposed to the really steep stuff or the really chunky stuff where you have to be a little more careful. You can't just let off the brakes and, and let it go. One bone to pick I have on the downhill is the dropper post just isn't long enough. I'm pretty tall and I'm like legs up to my armpits. So I want a really tall dropper post and you know, this, this dropper post just isn't tall enough. Luckily there is room. You could upgrade and put a longer dropper post in there, but it's a bit of a bummer that on a size extra large with a 510 mil reach, you get a, a short dropper post. Let's compare this to some other bikes. The Trans X is kind of like the Occam in that it falls into this weird limbo between trail and all mountain bikes. It's not really an all mountain bike. It doesn't descend like the Ripmo, the High Tower, the SB130. Those descend bigger and burlier than this bike. Uh, but it also doesn't descend like a Tallboy or a Ripley or a Spur or your kind of more traditional trail bikes. I think you could call the category like a long travel trail bike where it rides light but it has a little bit more travel to back you up in case things get really hairy. Um, so I'd probably put it right there with wherever the Occam lives in the whole category of, of bikes. So who is this bike for? Um, you know, it's super balanced, super versatile. It goes uphill as well as it goes downhill. Um, I would do big days on it. I'd go climb four or 5,000 feet, do a 35, 40 mile ride on it. Kind of like I, I'd use a cross country bike. 
but then I'd also ride Captain Ahab on it or Grafton Mesa. You know, you get those really chunky Southern Utah trails. I'd happily go ride that on it. I think this is a very, very good bike for someone who can only have one and they like to climb, they like to descend, they don't really put an emphasis on one or the other. Uh, they just want a bike that does everything fairly well. I honestly thought the bike was going to be a little bit burlier than it was, and to see it taken just a step back to make it a little more versatile was pretty refreshing. I liked seeing that. It wasn't just any other all-mountain or, or kind of big, burly, descending-focused bike. It was very cool to see this quick, lively, energetic climber that still descends very well. So if that kind of bike sounds intriguing to you, I think you should put the Trance on your list. So thanks for sticking around watching this review. If you like this format where I'm out here in a really nice, cool place listening to helicopters, um, let me know in the comments below if you prefer this format. Sorry. If you prefer this format where I'm out here in a really cool place and not winded and trying not to die while riding a bike and talking about it at the same time, let me know in the comments below. If you like the old format, uh, I can go back to that. Just, just let me know. And uh, again, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.